Welcome to the 12th International Permaculture Conference. <laughs> for, uh, for some of us, this is the beginning of a 10-day marvellous adventure. Uh, for some of you, you're just here for the day or two days. You're very, all very welcome. We've got people here from 70 countries, um, which is fantastic. A really, truly international event. People have travelled really from... from literally from the Himalayas to the Brazilian rainforests, Hong Kong skyscrapers. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's extraordinary. So, yep, I'm Chief Executive of the Permaculture Association, Andy. Um, I'm going to be hosting the plenaries and um, <laughs> keeping everyone to time. <laughs> um, so today, we are looking at the future that has already arrived. We are going to highlight the inspiring, far-sighted projects of today that show us what a sustainable society could, and we hope will, look like in the future. But before we go to our speakers, I'm going to do some quick housekeeping. So first of all, for all you sort of Twitterati and people that need to get online, it's at British Quakers, capital B, capital Q. So, at British Quakers. There is no planned fire alarm. If it does go, please follow the green signs and stewards will direct you to the nearest assembly point. Have a look through your programme and choose your sessions in advance. We suggest you have a second choice. Uh, there's a lot on, so, yeah, try and work something out before you go. Importantly... There are many people here for whom English is their second language, and we want to make sure that this conference is good for them as well. So we have the wonderful support of these palantypists. And um, we also have a system for support. So if you speak other languages and you would like to sign up, there is a timetable where you can do so in the small hall. Uh, there are a number of changes to the programme. You always have to print this in advance, and obviously it never quite works out. So I'll just say there's a, an errata sheet, which you will have with the poem on the back. Um, but the ones I want to highlight just now are that um, Amelia Melville and Cat Wall's workshop, Enabling Change, is today in the morning at room five, rather than Wednesday afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, Alice Taylor unfortunately has had to cancel her workshop which was in your backyard. Permaculture into Business Realities workshop is in room four, that's today. And the Ecosystem of Community Action uh, is in room six. So it's all, in your, all on your sheet, but I just wanted to draw your attention to that. Uh, lunch and break, lunch and break time drinks will be in the Ensley and the Bloomsbury Suites and actually dotted around uh, the building. And we've got some fantastic stalls and exhibitions from our sponsors and from other friends. Um, and we very much encourage you to go and have a look at what they've got to show you. If you have a special diet and you have told us in advance, then your food will be on the ground floor and it will be very clearly marked. Okay, at conferences, we know, you know some people are introverted, some people are extroverted. We're all very different. We kind of, should I talk to someone else? Well, we've given you an official question to talk to anyone you like, an, an official reason to talk to anyone you like. So we have a lunchtime question, which is today, what is your greatest hope for the future? So you can just go up to anyone and say, what's your greatest hope for the future? Okay, if you need help, ask a steward. They've got a green lanyard. Don't ask me. Um, and if you would like to join us for the Alara Gala, um, this evening, and you haven't already booked, you can do so at lunch at the Euston Road, um, Euston Road entrance. There's a reception there. Um, Alara is an eco-business, a whole food business. Um, they're a member of the Permaculture Association's land network. They have a fantastic forest garden. It's a relatively short walk from here. Um, you're going to get a, a glass of elderflower champagne and 
most importantly, some music from the incredible Vegetable Sound System. <laughs> yeah. If, has anyone here been to see Incredible Vegetable Sound System before? Would you recommend it? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so if you haven't booked yet, please go to do so um, at lunch. Um, questions. We've kind of decided against asking questions at the end of the plenaries, just because we, we find it can be a very frustrating process. Nobody, not everybody gets their question asked. Some people stand up and spend 15 minutes telling you something and not asking a question. So we're just not going to do that. But our uh, speakers will be around, and we've, we're they're very happy to talk to you after, in the breaks. And I'm gonna, we're going to have a plenary tomorrow. If you have got a question you'd like to ask, come and tell me, and I'll write it down, and I'll pick some of those questions to ask in the plenary. So there's a, just come and talk to me. Uh, yeah, so... As I say, if you want to use Twitter, we're using hashtag design your world. And um, talking of phones, please turn your phone to silent if you could. OK, so talking about silence, maybe we should sort of start with a pause. This is the um, home of the British Quakers. And they find great power in silence. So let's just take a moment to stop and think. So, there is absolutely no doubt that we are at a critical point in history. This conference is one of many conferences this year, last year, all asking a similar question. How can we change the story? How do we live differently? How do we step up to the challenge, the huge challenge that we face? Ch challenge is multiple. The refugee crisis is in our mind at the moment, but it's just one of so many different challenges that we face. As stated in Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which sets out the United Nations new sustainable development goals, which every government will be signing at the end of this month. It says, the future of humanity and of our planet lies in our hands. It will be for all of us to ensure that the journey is successful. And today and tomorrow, we are going to work our hardest to make sure that journey is successful. It seems that people are desperate for solutions. Well, we have them. Or at the very least, we have a way of thinking about how we can bring them together with, with each other. We've got this sort of participatory design approach, a solutions-focused method of engaging people, looking at the skills and resources we've got, and making a difference. We think that permaculture, plus the many other wonderful sustainability initiatives and sustainability-focused organisations, together can make a really major contribution to actually delivering these sustainable, sustainable development goals and help design the world we want. But the changes we need are not just technical. They are cultural, too. We need a cultural shift. So we thought it made sense to start with a poem. And I'm going to hand over now to Siobhan, who will read us some poems. Forgotten memory. Let us grieve for the broken body of our earth for the pillage devastation of our despair, crying out in her agony, her legs splayed open wide and all her treasure plundered. Let us cover our naked bodies in the ashes of our dead and weeping kneel upon this blessed earth, sending up a great lament, imploring her forgiveness. For this is our body, this is our blood, 
only we have forgotten. We have forgotten the place where prayer opens softly in the darkness of the body, humming with sweetness. The place where every cell and fibre of our beings is ringing out an angelus, an alleluia chorus, an ave maria. So let us remember the deep well of our belonging, the holy mystery of our lives, and let us dream a new world into being. Let us dream a new world into being. For there is a place older than this one, where the body keeps a gentle harmony to the soul's steady beat, to the deep thrum, thrum, thrumming of the land, to the waltzing, whooshing of the waves, to the rhythmic moaning of the tides. There is another place, not far from here, where the soul entwines with the body in the rapturous elegance of embrace, singing a forgotten melody, resonating without a hitch in perfect, perfect pitch. There is another place not far from here we used to call home. So let us remember the deep well of our belonging, the holy mystery of our lives, and let us dream a new world into being. Let us dream a new world into being. Thank you. So thank you. I'm Siobhan, I'm the poet. I'm going to be here for the next couple of days. And we're going to invite you with, uh, to create a conference poem for IPC UK 2015. So I'm up on the first floor landing. I'm sure you'll find me up the big sweeping staircase. And we've got lots of coloured slips of paper. We've got um, pens. We've got pastels if you're feeling artistic. So come and bring us your words. So you can do one word. You can do a sentence. You can do a sonnet if you like. But come and give us your words. Your words for grieving for our world. What are you grieving for in our world? And what are you dreaming into being? What are you dreaming into being? So come and find me and we'll create a big group conference poem, a bit like this with colored paper and long sheets of brown paper, and then we'll present it at the end. And I'm hoping that there'll be some people here who would like to come and read the conference poem with me on the last day, and also perhaps to translate a small bit of it into your own languages so that we have a tapestry of languages from around the world. We're hoping you'll do that. And um, there is also a poetry film made from the poem Forgotten Memory, which is in your packs. We're hoping to show that in room two at lunchtime. And that's in 10 different languages from all around the world, grieving and dreaming for our world. All right, thank you very much and have a lovely conference. Thank you, Siobhan. That was, um, yeah, I, I found it hard not to feel incredibly, I <laughs> don't know what I can say. Um, okay, so before we go to our keynote speakers, uh, it is with great excitement that I um, introduce you to Chris and Kat. Chris is our research coordinator. And Kat Richards is a very long-standing and much valued volunteer who has helped us to put together the Permaculture International Research Network. And um, I'll hand over to you. Well, hello everyone. This is kind of amazing. A little bit terrifying, but also very exciting. So it is amazing to see you all here. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm Dr. Chris Warburton-Brown. I'm the research coordinator of the Permaculture Association uh, Britain. Uh, last week I was talking to a friend about coming to this conference and he asked me how many people were coming and I said over 600. And then he asked me how many of those I'd met before and I said well about 40. And then it just struck me there are 500 and plus people in this room who I am now meeting for the first time. So hello everyone. Um, and that's true for everybody here. 
Nobody in this room, I think, knows even half of the other people here. And there'll be some people here who know absolutely nobody else in this room. Uh, and we'll be meeting everybody for the first time. So over the next two days, we're going to have an amazing time as we share our knowledge and our expertise. We learn from each other, we build friendships, and we build networks. To take just one simple example, in this room we've got Christopher Nesbitt, who works to restore degraded soils in Belize, and we've got Joel Williams, who works to restore degraded soils here in the UK. These guys have never met before. Hopefully they're going to meet in the next two days, and hopefully they're going to have some amazing conversations. <laughs> and that's going to be multiplied over and over and over again. So wouldn't it be brilliant if we could keep those conversations going after the conference is finished? If we could bring in hundreds more people who aren't here to join us in those conversations? If we could continue to share our expertise and our experience, to ask each other the questions we want answered? That's what we want to do with the Permaculture International Research Network, or PERN. We want to create an online network of conversations, of knowledge sharing, of question asking. We want to find out what we already know within the permaculture community, and to find out what we don't know yet, but what we still want to discover next. Everything PERN does will be focused on two simple aims. Improving the practice of permaculture by permaculture practitioners, and building an evidence base to show that what we do really works. That's our vision for PERN. It's incredibly exciting to be launching it here today. We hope you will all join us in making that vision a reality. And having explained our vision, I'm going to hand over to Kat to explain how we're going to deliver it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. So now Chris has outlined our vision, you may be wondering how we propose to deliver it. In 2012, the Permaculture Association Britain started a series of surveys with which we observed and interacted with researchers and practitioners all over the world, many of yourselves included. We found that almost everyone was enthusiastic about an online network where they could pursue their research interests within a supportive community. You asked us for a network with many yields, from the more obvious sharing of research to those of building community, guidance on research methodologies, making friends, and possibly even enjoying ourselves at the same time. One of the findings from the surveys that was most surprising was the massive diversity of both permaculture practice and research. By building an international research network, we hope to encourage this diversity as well as a diversity of geography, research topics, and approaches. This diversity of research patterns will shape how members use the site to self-organize. So we're going to build it in a simple way so that people can find each other along the lines of discipline, location, and climate. This could be quite challenging because we have over 400 members in 50 countries, as you can see. In particular, we'd like to create a live feed of research that participants might be interested in to help to exploit the productive edges of the diversity of interests, approaches, and disciplines. We're hoping we can catch and store some of the excitement, energy, and motivation from this conference to kickstart the network so that we can reap the rewards of improved permaculture practice and a robust evidence base far into the future. We hope this network will creatively use and respond to change in the world around us, but for that, we need you. We want to hear from individuals, networks, organizations, who'd like to get involved and share in the shaping of our own Permaculture International Research Network. Thanks to the financial support from Lush Cosmetics, the Permaculture Association Britain have been able to launch PERN and can support it until March 2016. From this small, slow financial solution, we hope to be able to secure the long-term financial security of the venture. So thank you for your time, and I hope you're as excited about the potential of this project as we all are. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. It really is a really big step forward. And again, thanks very much to Lush Cosmetics, Simon Caddy, and all the team there who have really helped make that possible. Okay. <laughs>